Hello, my name is Russell Meichler, and I'm a technology consultant and adjunct instructor for various online university systems. This is a micro lecture for defending against malware, common practices that could be used to be able to defend yourself against malicious software. In today's discussion, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, brief introduction to be able to look at threats that are posed against personal computers. And we're also going to be taking a look at uh, ways to be able to defend against these kinds of things, as well as we're going to be taking a look at both individual strategies as well as uh, small business strategies to be able to control the threat and be able to minimize the productivity losses that are associated with uh, malware infestation. Um, you can consider that there are a number of different threats that are kind of covered underneath the umbrella of malware. Bots and scripts. Bots are programs that are written by individuals and uh, are meant to be able to perform small uh, discrete forms of transactions or small discrete, to discrete forms of uh, intrusions onto computer systems and then be able to uh, repeat those uh, those uh, intrusions time and time again when called upon usually by an external source that's found on the internet. Adware and spyware are utilities that are meant to be able to snoop into what a computer user might be doing on the computer or what they might be doing online and where they're going on the internet. The problem with the infestation of this kind of material is, is that sometimes it's very uh, intrusive and intends to be able to hijack the user's experience to bring them to specific pages, or it's intending to be able to uncover personal private information about the end user and what their business is online. Trojan horses are applications that are looked at as fairly innocuous until they actually activate. And when they activate, what they're doing is that they're trying to capture keyboard or keystrokes so that, let's say, passwords, which are usually encrypted or uh, put behind some kind of visual display that you can't see them, instead they're captured at the point of entry on a keyboard, and then they're bundled up and transmitted somewhere. Viruses are specific forms of malicious programs that are written to perform some kind of um, either destructive behavior or uh, a behavior to be able to eavesdrop or to be able to compromise information that can be found on computer systems. And worms are a form of virus that is specifically designed to be what we call polymorphic or instantiated. And what they do is, is, they re is that they replicate. Their whole purpose in life is to be able to infest other computer systems. They may have a deliberate intent to harm computer systems, or most often their replication puts a drain on additional memory and processor resources. So then that pulls down the ability for the computer to be able to work on more concrete, substantial things, and instead is working on just replicating a bunch of viruses. Uh, and in this, in, in this case, the worm itself becomes destructive to the overall processing environment that's uh, needed by the computer system. There are a lot of risks associated with this kind of software. One is that we see diminished PC performance. You probably experience this as an individual when we have these kinds of things uh, infest a computer system. But to an environment that has a small business or a mid-range business, diminished server performance could have a dramatic impact upon the entire networking environment and how it's able to conduct its business. Um, also, too, we see higher levels of total cost of ownership, or TCO. There's additional costs necessary to be able to protect against these uh, kinds of intrusions, as well as try to undo them once we find the infestation. There's a great deal of lost productivity. Uh, the time that it takes to be able to work through these issues or the lost opportunity of uh, being able to get work done because processing and memory uh, is stolen and taken away and put into the hands of some of these um, uh, of some of these threats uh, can greatly diminish uh, the, the overall value of the computing experience for a small business. There's also a risk of exposure of data or data loss, is that data itself could be destroyed or transmitted or sent to some other location. Um, also, compromise of personal private information, confidentiality, intellectual property could be lost or compromised and sent to other locations, which in turn could jeopardize a business and their strategic plan. Uh, could also jeopardize the ability for a business to be able to, re to retain confidentiality over specific forms of records that may be mandated by things like regulatory requirement or may even be mandated by corporate policy. Um, I'm thinking of things like salary records, employee records, medical records, insurance records, and so on. Also too, malware can be able to introduce potential criminal activities, such as being able to use the hard drive of a microcomputer as a temporary storage location for either pornography or, let's say, uh, stolen intellectual property. 
Um, some defenses uh, for small to mid-range businesses. That one is you want to take a look specifically at gateway protection. You're looking at the firewall, and if the firewall has been recently upgraded, or if the firewall has uh, adequate protections to be able to track and notify end users or an administrator in the advent of some level of compromise. A lot of people end up ignoring the firewall. But at the same time, the firewall is like one of our first layers of defense. And if we're not paying attention to some of the attacks or to some of the intrusions that could be going on at a given time, then we're not doing our job to be able to make sure that the uh, environment is uh, being protected. Another area of concern is the bridgehead mail filter. In other words, a mail server is the first area where we're going to see an intrusion of this kind of, uh, of this kind of software. That's because it's one of the weakest areas inside of our defense systems. We allow just about anything to come in over email, and so we need both antivirus and anti-spam utilities that's filtering out our mail servers and mail systems. This is even before that the mail travels to the individual PC and that the email then is filtered out by another layer of antivirus and anti-spam. We want something to be able to block the email before it even comes into our network and so using a bridgehead mail filter uh, allows us to be able to trap the email before it's even brought in through um, to our internal network and given to our PCs. We want to be able to have a centralized antivirus strategy. We want to be able to put an antivirus product on a server that's then deployed to the end desktops and we can control that centrally. We want to try to automate operating system updates and we want to standardize the internet browser. Sometimes a number of individual users make their own decisions about what kind of browser that they like. All the while this increase, increases more risk um, only because we're unable to standardize and understand some of the risks associated with each different version. By standardizing at least on one browser, whether or not it's Internet Explorer or Firefox or Opera, and then using that one browser that at least the, allows the administrator to be able to try to um, understand risks and to be able to minimize those risks to the greatest degree possible. Also, two levels of policies. One is restricting the acceptable use of portable media devices. As you know, jump drives or things like iPods, once they're plugged into the computer system, literally bypass all firewall mechanisms and allow viruses to be exposed directly to the computer system and then the internal network. Limiting the acceptable use of those devices allows us to have greater degree of confidence that the um, external intrusions can be somewhat avoided, but also to limit the use of instant messaging. Increasingly, IAM is becoming more of a portal for being able to deploy these kinds of uh, malware threats because we already have firewalls, we already have antivirus, we already have uh, bridgehead and gateway systems, and so now what we're seeing is just an evolution of attack that's now coming across another vulnerability, which is an open socket that allows people to be able to communicate back and forth to desktops. By being able to limit the use of instant messaging, at least standardize to one application that allows us to be able to reduce some of the potential risk that is afforded directly to the desktops of our microcomputers. Also having a disaster recovery plan that includes backup, that includes redundancy. And finally education, being able to teach your end user community how to be able to take care and protect their infrastructure, to be able to protect their assets against some level of compromise. This is just a routine um, understanding of malware threats and in understanding then the threats that are posed to a microcomputer, hopefully people can make better choices in their day-to-day -day, uh, decisions with computers. For individuals, by taking a look at some free software, we can be able to greatly mitigate some of the threats posed to individual microcomputers. Uh, being able to download, let's say, something like Zone Alarm from zonealarm.com, uh, being able to apply Windows Defender, free AVG, for to be able to allow for email and antivirus defense. Uh, be able to allow for anti-phishing and pop-up settings inside of browsers. Don't turn those off, but instead turn them on. They're there for a reason. They're attempting to be able to prevent your browser from accessing known sites that are likely harmful. Um, you can also download something like Malwarebytes uh, from malwarebytes.org that allows us to be able to find and then trap and then erase uh, common forms of malware that we find on the system. In fact, I would use uh, Malwarebytes quite frequently in order to um, uh, eradicate uh, uh, literally hundreds of these kinds of malware threats from a microcomputer and then set up the rest of these materials, Zone Alarm, Free AVG, so that we can be able to have a, a good platform going forward that's relatively uh, secure. Also to make sure that your operating systems are relatively up to date, that includes using Windows Update on a frequent basis. And finally, also consider your personal behavior and exposure. What kind of things do you use your computer for? Are your, more beha are your behaviors more risk prone? Are you browsing to a number of sites that has a lot of contents and a lot of um, 
uh, notifications pops up for things for downloading, for installing, for installing various pieces of software? Do you frequently go to other websites and download other software for the use on your personal computer? The more that you're installing on your computer, the more risk that is associated with your online activity. So thank you very much for your time. Um, again, I'm a technology consultant on Vancouver, Washington, and I teach for numerous colleges and universities. You can find this micro lecture as well as other lectures on my website at www.mikelearnassociates.com. Thank you very much, and everyone have a very nice day.